This is Donna with More Than a Review, and we are live in Nashville at the uh, Muncie Christian Product Expo. And I, I'm here with um, Kathy, and we. She walked in the other day, and I was like, "This is a hard topic. I don't know." <laughs> and um, I tell you, before she left, I knew it was a God moment that she came to see me. So I'm thrilled that we're going to do this interview, and that I'm going to get to share the book with you. It's 30 Days of Hope When Caring for Aging Parents. And um, it's funny, she asked me, "Are your parents older?" And I was like, "Oh no." And I'm like, "Well, okay, yes, they are." But I refuse. <laughs> admit it because I don't feel old. I don't think they can be old. <laughs> um, but we, we had a great conversation and I know that um, this is really going to touch several of you out there because um, one, you're close to my age, most of you. <laughs> but um, so Kathy, go ahead and tell a little bit about yourself and then we'll go um, into the book. Okay. Um, well, I'm a Bible study author primarily in devotionals, but um, actually, oh, and I have to tell you because I have three grandchildren and one on the way, oh, and so I, that's you know at the top of the list is great. Is actually I'm Nana, right? I'm Nana, except one of the two year olds calls me Nano, and so I'm I'm Nana. I'm mom. I'm I'm wife. We've got three dogs at home, so oh, yeah. you know the family life is what many of of your <laughs> listeners have that yes. sort of thing. So that's oh, that's yeah. top of the list of who I am and what I'm about. But um, I love God's word. I love teaching God's word. I love bringing. God's word into the situations of life, which is exactly what this book is about. Yeah. So I was, you know, I was telling them it was a hard topic. So what made you decide to like write it and put it in a book? <laughs> because I needed the spiritual encouragement from God's word. I was shocked when um, first caring for my father-in-law who lived with us for the last five years of his life and then now caring for my parents. Um, what a spiritual journey that caregiving is. And before we got into it, I thought, okay, I know this will probably be emotional. I know it's going to be physically taxing and mentally taxing and all of those things. But I was, I was really surprised that it was such a spiritual journey that God wasn't just working in my parents' life. He wanted to use the whole life journey to work in me too, spiritually, uh, to, to refine me, um, to make me more the woman he wants me to be. Wow. Wow. So thus, yes. I want others yes. to find that same sort of encouragement, and it was only with God's Word. So is the book designed more for people going through it, um, you know, that are caring for their parents or even preparing people? You know, I think that it would be great for, for both. Of course, those who are going through it right now in the trenches and needing that daily encouragement and uplift. But for me, when, it's, when it started with my parents, I felt so unprepared. And so I think that it would be really wise if you see that on the horizon <laughs> to think maybe I will go ahead and start preparing myself now for things that are coming so that I won't be shocked and surprised and quite, we, we never can be fully prepared. Yeah, yeah. So what, was there a chapter that was like the hardest to write or? Um, there were a couple that were the hardest to write. Um, my mom has is in the latter stages of Alzheimer's. And so um, I wrote a, a devotion on losing them before they're gone. Mm -hmm. And so thinking about, of course I thought was thinking about the woman my mom had always been and the relationship we had always had and how dramatically different that is now. And, and so thinking on that, it's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a long grieving process because I've, I've seen her fall away by pieces. Uh, so writing that yeah. devotional was difficult. Wow. Has it helped to write it as you're going through it? Oh my, I, I really think that it has. Uh, that was one of the chapters and there's there, uh, devotionals and there's several others that as I was writing, I just, I, I stopped and sobbed at my desk in front of my laptop because it was even in the process of writing, bringing up things that I realized had been there, but I had not really thought about or dealt with or gave to God. Mm -hmm. And so the writing process itself was <laughs> at times excruciating, <laughs> but also very uh, healing yeah. in ways. And God was, you know, God was right there as I was writing it. 
And so I would encourage any of your listeners who are going through that right now, even just mm -hmm. a daily journal, um, I think is a very healing process to write about it and give it to God as you do. That is good. That is good. Um, so you mentioned that it was spiritual. So talk a little bit about that. <laughs> so um, the last five years of my father-in-law's life, he lived with us. And the whole time was not like in-depth caring, but the last couple of years in particular was lots of uh, hospital stays and doctor's visits and, mm -hmm. and tests and, and driving all of this. And, and the first uh, few times where something popped up and I had to cancel something on my calendar because my husband was he's retired now but he was still working at the time and so all of that responsibility fell mm -hmm. to me and God showed me first of all my selfishness because I I didn't want to let go of my calendar <laughs> my agenda I and, and so he was his needs were intruding <laughs> on my desires and so God God just said Kathy you are being so selfish this is a a God-honoring test I've put before you is caring for your father-in-law and you're worried about canceling lunch you know and so I mean that was like oh my goodness you're you're so right and then even a little bitterness for those who are caring for in-laws um, you think well you know this isn't, this isn't my I'm just being real yes. you know yes. because God was showing me how shallow I still was in so many ways and so so yes god has god has used it and is still using it with my parents as a as a tool for spiritual refinement and i just love that god never wastes anything yeah. that he allows into mm -hmm. my life so he he wants to use us as caregivers as his hands in our parents and our in-laws lives um, as well as he wants to use their lives as tools of refinement for us. So it's definitely a, a two-way relationship, but man, it just dredges up all kinds of stuff you don't even realize is there. Oh, I bet, I bet. I, uh, it's been, I was going to ask you that about the in-laws even. I can imagine. And I think just going through all of it, and that's what I think the readers love is when the authors are very um, vulnerable and real, you know, like we're feeling it, you know, right. like are other people feeling it going through the same thing. And I think yeah. that's sometimes also what helps is just knowing other people are going through or have gone through the same thing you have. Absolutely. And the book is full of, um, of course, because my experience is just one experience and I have not gone through everything that caregivers do and so I try to bring in there's lots of stories from other people lots of voices in there with different different experiences unique because every family situation is going to be very unique um, so there's just truth principles that you can apply it's not going to answer all the questions <laughs> I do think though after especially after talking to you yesterday that it helps just to prepare you mentally like this might be coming or you know some right. form of it will be coming so. right well for instance there's a devotional in there about um, unity with siblings because mm -hmm. that was something that that God really burdened me with the importance of and I just have one sibling have a brother that we be on the same page mm -hmm. and how do we you know only God can can do that but we can be so careful and discerning and gracious with each other because we both want what's best yeah. for our parents um, but sometimes we have different ideas of what that looks like <laughs> yeah no I agree I agree um, so um, kind of closing the interview any um, last piece of advice for someone going through it or about to go through it that you would give them and right. then we'll end on a fun note <laughs> okay so a couple of things is I have learned to write in pencil and what I mean is um, because that's something God brought up to me. My my planning and getting in the way is so I can still make plans, but I need to hold that loosely and realize that my time is God's and however he wants to use it. So I, I to write in pencil. And another big thing is to not to try to do it alone. I've talked with so many caregivers who thought, you know, I don't want to bother anybody. I can do this. And then you've got burnout and and breakdown and it's not good for the caregiver or those they're caring for and so when people say hey let me know if you need anything we so we'll say okay yeah I will and then we never think about it again but 
most of those people who say that want to help and they just don't know how. Yeah. So don't be afraid to call them up even, and I've done this with a family friend, to sit at the hospital with one parent while you're doing something <laughs> for the other. So yeah. yeah, reach out for help. That is very good. And I do think, you know, advice for those of us that we, you don't know what to do. And so it's good to, um, you know, ask and then say, can you do this? You know, right, can absolutely. You Give them something specific because yeah. they don't. And something practical and it helps you both. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Okay, let's end with a fun note. What okay. do you think um, listeners would be surprised to know about you? Oh, surprised to know about me. You know, I, I am totally an open book. No, I'll tell you this. I am really, really funny and people don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I think they might. But no. <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you guys so much for listening. It was great to God, have thanks you. Thanks for having um, me. I definitely feel like it was a God moment to have you come in and see me. So I appreciate you guys listening. Bye-bye. I forgot to tell them.